Sunday, 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 Grave Digger is here at Nashville Super Speedway. The leanest, the meanest racing machine, Grave Digger. I don't watch monster trucks. I don't know what the guy sounds like, but that's amazing. Just arrived here at Nashville Super Speedway. It is NASCAR Cup Series race day, and the first thing we spot is Grave Digger, the real, the mean, the green machine. Oh, and right next door, hidden in its shadow, is the race car, the paint scheme that Kevin Harvick is running today. Wow, what an awesome integration. I know Keelan Harvick, Harvick's son, had something to do with it, but that's that's pretty awesome. What a warm welcome to Nashville Super Speedway. It's Cup Series race day, Ally 400, first NASCAR Cup Series race ever ever at Nashville Super Speedway. First NASCAR race weekend in 10 years. It's been great so far. Excited to see what today has in store. We are here in the fan zone as they call it. Hashtag NASCAR. NASCAR. It's a sellout crowd today. We're out in the fan zone for now, but we will be heading into the garage area and hopefully out onto the pit road before and hopefully during today's race. So you're gonna see every inch of this facility, hopefully, if all goes according to plan. I hear chainsaws? So it sounds like. Whoa, look at these wood carvings and they're still doing more in the background. You see that? You see that? Whoa, that's an actual chainsaw he's sculpting with. Dude, that's nuts. Whoa, check it out. DeWalt has a whole booth over here. They got a hauler, they got a race car with the hood up. Take a peek in at that TRD engine. 118 degrees in there. 118. Huh? You can do it though, can't you? I'm not with a way to nothing. <laughs> Still more than three hours until a green flag, but a pretty dense crowd out here in the fan zone. They already announced. This is a sellout crowd. 40,000 fans roughly here at Nashville. Dixie Vodka has a setup here as well with a gorgeous looking Cole Custer show car. Huge crowd here around the Monster Energy area. Oh, they're making smoke over there. Stands it up, hooks that foot underneath. Pretty All awesome to see the stunt the bikes way. out here at the Monster Energy stage way. area once Moving again. It's been a, been a year or so since I've seen that. Hey, this wouldn't be an at-track vlog without a view of the merch haulers. SHR has a huge crowd out front. Nice. Guess what driver this crowd is here for? No surprise, it's Chase Elliott. Defending series champion, one of the few drivers who still has their own exclusive merch hauler, but they can afford it. Oh boy, they can sustain it, that's, that's better. Right across from him is the Toyota, they call it the Toyota Race racing experience, ooh, oh and I can see why. This looks similar to how it was laid out at Circuit of the Americas, the most recent race that I was at, but they've got Kyle Busch's car on display. Hey, that's a pretty sweet photo opportunity. Oh, it has a door. Oh, what is this? We've been lied to all these years. They do have doors. Oh. That M&M's livery really reflects nicely in the Tennessee sun. Oh, I say that and immediately a cloud comes out. Still, looks good. All three manufacturers have a huge presence pretty much at every race weekend across the way. The Toyota merch hauler. Bubba Wallace plus Hamlin, Truex, and Christopher Bell are right here next door. The only other driver, I believe, besides Chase with his own hauler is Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch won his 100th career Xfinity race yesterday, and he said afterwards that he may, in fact, retire from the Xfinity series after this year. He says it's a real possibility. He's only got two races left. That might be it. So we'll see. He might actually be sticking to his uh, earlier promise. Big crowd around the official Ally 400 merch hauler. A lot of cool Tennessee-inspired, Nashville-inspired logos and things I've seen this weekend. Plus, of course, Ally being a major sponsor, they've been all over the track. On the flip side, Chevy has some cars on display, including this Camaro ZL1, kind of an interesting greenish color. Now, I will say Chevy does seem to have a significantly smaller presence than the other manufacturers do. We'll find the Ford place in a second. Scanner rentals, I think you still, looks like pre-order rental pickups and retail sales only, so I'm not sure. You may still have to pre-order your scanner every weekend. But uh, I may be wrong. I feel like I haven't seen one of these huge haulers at the track in a while. If you're going to a race and you want to rent a, a scanner, make sure you, I don't know, contact the track, contact Racing Electronics, and they'll uh, hopefully get it sorted out for sure. Here we are at the Chevy merch hauler. A lot of Richard Petty Motorsports, Eric Jones stuff over here. RCR has t-shirts, hats, and much, much more. Oh, there's two Chevy haulers. This one has all the Chip Ganassi racing and track house and Spire stuff right next door. All almost directly across from the Chevy space. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, this is not good. This is not good. <laughs> Just was walking up to get a photo of this boat that has been 
cut in half and sealed with flex seal and then uh, uh, we got a gust of wind here. Nothing a little flex seal can't solve. Oh, here we go. I walked right past them earlier, but maybe the only other line close to as long as Chase Elliott's line is the Hendrick Motorsports Junior Motorsports line. Dale Earnhardt Jr. Junior Motorsports, Larson, Byron, Bowman, and a sea of fans with money to spend on stuff. And at the end over here, Team Penske and Wood Brothers to Benedetto stuff as well. I just like to show you guys the haulers so you get an idea of you know who the popular teams and drivers are, what the crowd looks like, and maybe a glimpse of what some of the merch is. But we've got a lot to see today, so we've got to keep moving. Oh, they got some fog effects and Alex Bowman's Ally 48 right here. Ally, the title sponsor of the race, the whole weekend pretty much. And they've got Bowman's normal car out front here. He's rocking a gorgeous alternate paint scheme this weekend. We'll see that up close in a little bit. Wow, the Ford area has just about as many show cars on display as they have actual street cars. Joey Logano's car right here. Ryan Newman's Kohler Generators number six. But the centerpiece is the NASCAR Next Gen Mustang. They got this thing on a turntable and everything. Oh my gosh, the center locking lugs. I just realized I've never seen the next gen car in person until now. This is, is this the actual one they used for the uh, showcase, the release? Oh, check out that rear diffuser. I've never been this close. I could practically touch. I'm not, I'm not gonna touch it. I don't wanna get kicked out and banned from all Ford dealers across the country, but oh, wow. This is insane. This is crazy. This thing looks gorgeous. Lots of fans are oohing and on at the future. The future of NASCAR. And then they also have Chase Briscoe's High Point Ford out here as well. As well as, you know, some normal Ford cars. Ford uh, Bronco Sport, the electric Mach-E Mustang. But that's pretty crazy. I didn't expect them to have a next-gen car on display. Oh, we're only a few months away from seeing that thing in action for the first time. Anticipation is killing me. It's just about killing me. And now we have made it technically to the entrance of the fan zone. We've kind of, we kind of came at this backwards based on where we had to park. But there you go, hashtag NASHCAR. So here we are at the official entrance of the Midway, but if we look to the left, you'll see the main Nashville Super Speedway grandstands and the turnstiles. Fans already filing in, still a few hours before green flag, but plenty of festivities, plenty of things to do inside the track. I've only shown you what's outside of the track. Another great view straight on the American flag. Yeah, a lot of great views outside the track here. Great photo opportunities. I'm just walking along the outside of the track now, kind of outside of turn four, heading towards the infield tunnel. Yeah, that's right, I'm walking it, getting my steps in. But here are one of the several campgrounds and it is packed. It is full. Again, when talking about capacity, those main, main grandstands we were admiring a minute ago seat around 25,000. So they brought in some temporary grandstands on either side. So the overall capacity is close to 40K and apparently they've sold that out for today's race. I have no idea what the campground capacity is or anything like that, but it's a one and a third mile track. They're running the uh, low downforce package today. I think it's gonna be a fun show. Both the truck and Xfinity race have had pretty great finishes, if you ask me, so I'm excited. They do have some trams and buses that come and go and take you into the infield, but uh, one had just left when I got to the stop and I didn't feel like waiting, so I'm hiking it. One thing that many have been talking about this weekend is parking and specifically traffic getting to and from the speedway. You know, it's clear that this, you know, the area around National Super Speedway isn't super developed, so a lot of fairly narrow roads, and I thought some of the traffic patterns were a little, I don't know, maybe inefficient. You know, they were having like four lanes coming from two different directions, like blending into one lane to get into the main parking stop, parking lot. I, I, maybe not the smartest way to do things, but you know, it is their first race and it is a sellout crowd today. So, you know, traffic getting in was a little rough, a little rough. I had access to the media parking lot, so I was able to bypass some of that traffic and park a little further away and just walk. So I saved some time that way, but yeah, getting into the, you know, general parking was not easy. Certainly a bit of a delay. And we left this morning around nine and uh, the race starts at 2:30. we left at about nine got to the track around 10 and uh, it was just you know log jam so i don't know for future races keep that in mind meanwhile we're following the fire rescue truck into the turn three and four tunnel into the infield as far as i know this is the only tunnel to get to and from the infield of the racetrack here i've not found any others and it's you know far away from everything so it's <laughs> whew, it's a hike i probably should have just waited for the tram oh Yo, who do I gotta talk to to get my own golf cart, you know? Like, that's the life right there. Welcome to Nashville Super Speedway. I really like this logo. I love that they're sticking with the guitar theme. I mean, Music City and everything, I guess it makes a ton of sense, but I love it. I love it. All right, well, we have made it. We are officially on the infield. There's the tunnel we just came through. You can see the blue wall. You can see sort of the track. 
See all the signage around uh, turn three there. And actually, while I'm thinking about it, I just want to say a quick thank you to everyone who came up and said hi to me while I was out in the fan zone. There was a ton of you who came up to you know, take photos, fist bump, talk racing for a couple minutes here and there. I really do appreciate the support. I wish I could get to everyone, ooh. And I know a lot of y'all have asked about doing meetups and things like that at the track, and I'd love to do those, but the reason I haven't is you know, oftentimes my weekends are extremely unpredictable. I'm, you know, dependent on other people's schedules. I'm traveling from far away. You know, there's just so many unpredictable things. I don't want to make any promises that I can't come through on. But as I'm hopefully able to visit more racetracks in the near future, maybe we'll be able to schedule some more official out of the groove meetups. But I just wanted to say a quick thank you to everyone who came out, said hi, all of you who support the videos. I wouldn't be here without you. And I really, really try not to take that for granted. Ooh, -wee, I am out of breath. Oh hey, we made it to the Media Center, and the NASCAR Cup Series garage is on the turn four side right through there. Back in the NASCAR Cup Series garage briefly, although I believe most of the cars have already been pushed to the grid, or at least into the line for tech. In fact, uh, Hamlin's hauler, or Hamlin's stall is empty, Larson's, I think most of the cars are gone. We'll see if there's any any lagging behind. And there in the red, there goes Bubba Wallace. Bubba Wallace. He's got people chasing him. Fans chasing them. Yes, NASCAR's returning to normal. You have fans chasing drivers in the garage. Go get them. Run. Haulers, a lot of team members, crew members, sponsors, officials, things like that standing around. This feels less crowded than it definitely felt, you know, in 2020, the last time I was able to get into the garage area at a NASCAR Cup race. But it does feel good to be back, and it does feel good to see so much of the industry relatively back to normal. Anthony Alfredo What's hanging up? out here. Dude, er Eric's so tall, he's gotta hold the camera like all the way this down. Is, this is what I do in my videos at home too. I hold the camera way up here so when people see me at the track, they're shocked. They just like fall over, you know, but I keep them on their toes. So how's the car this weekend? Good, good. We actually qualified uh, 18th in our Speed Co. Ford Mustang and I, I believe we're actually starting 16th because I think two cars are going to the rear. So that's yeah. that's an excellent qualifying effort for our team. I'm really happy about it. Now we just gotta go execute and capitalize on it. Good luck today, man. I hope Thank I you. 38 cars fast. We'll be uh, right. we'll be watching. I'll be, I'll be over. I'll be up in the grandstands, man. I'll have a bird's oh, eye view. That blue car is hard to miss. Yeah, yeah. It's an awesome scheme. Easy to see, and uh, hopefully it's up front at some point. Got to see Anthony Alfredo. A lot of the crew guys just hanging out right now. Maybe eating lunch. I just saw some drivers walk, but I didn't get the camera out in time. But just keep an eye out. If you do get right now, they're not really doing hot passes, but they are doing like VIP. Plow, just got a fly flew in my face. A racing fly. Ooh, check out these uh, wheels with no tire, no treads. Whoa. But no, if you do happen to get garage access in the near future, always keep your head on a swivel. Anywhere you look, you will see someone you recognize. I've seen Marty Snyder walking by already like four times today. Bob Pockris. Bob Pockris is a celebrity around these parts. And plenty of drivers everywhere you look. Never a dull moment in the NASCAR Cup Series garage. But it is a bit emptier. I remember like Homestead 2019, granted that was the finale, but the garage area, especially around the championship four was packed. I'll admit, I enjoy the extra elbow space, but it'll be really nice to get even more people in the NASCAR garage, hopefully soon. Now let's go check out some race cars out on pit road, but ooh, first, Victory Lane is wide open. And I do mean wide open. This is what everyone's chasing. Well, this is where everyone wants to be standing in here in a, in a few hours. Ally 400, here it is. Right in the center of the garage area. Now. Let's go out on the pit lane and see some race cars because so many teams seem to bring their best paint schemes to the track this weekend. Danny B and Claudia B, how's it going y'all? Having a good weekend? We saw that thing right over there. The suspension broke on that Mach E. On the Mustang, it broke? Yeah. Who's, who's driving it? It was Austin Cindric driving it. Cindric? Cindric, you mad man? Breaking new things. This is why we can't have nice things. Oh, Bubba Wallace has PetSmart on the car. Daniel Suarez has Tootsies, a famous uh, bar here in downtown Nashville. Gorgeous. There's Anthony Alfredo's car we were talking about earlier. Good qualifying effort for them. Oh, and here's the look everyone is talking about. Grave digger. I keep saying it that way. I don't know why. But look at that on Kevin Harvick's car. We saw it outside, but there's the real thing. Their actual car. That's pretty nice. Oh, hey, DeWalt again, right next to uh, Christopher Bell's pit box. Somehow I always find myself with the uh, black and yellow. I love looking at all the tires that teams have laying around and behind their pit stall. Look at all this 20. They are everywhere. How do you keep track of all of these? Richard Petty Motorsports pit box next to the Richard Petty Motorsports race car. Nice. Oh, but this, this is the best paint scheme on track. This might be the best paint scheme all season. I think it is, for now at least. We're still early in the year, kind of. But holy Toledo, Alex Bowman's 
ally scheme. I believe this is technically designed by Dale Jr. Hey, don't get too close. Whoa, 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 whoa. Why is he getting so close? Why is he getting so close? He's gonna, he's blocking the view. Yeah, get out of here. Show us the car. Oh, baby. Oh my gosh. This is gorgeous. This, I, I'm, I don't want to get crazier. I don't want to get nuts. Maybe it's the heat getting to me. But that might be the best paint scheme ever. At least my favorite. I'm not even kidding. That thing is amazing. You guys know I like light blue. My first ever YouTube series. My logo was a light blue color. I love purple race cars and the base color is purple. And the pink accents and design. I mean, that might be the best paint scheme ever. That might even beat many of Matt Kenseth's DeWalt colored cars. I know, I might like a car more than the yellow and black DeWalt car. I might, it might just be happening. <sighs> My mind's kind of blown right now. I don't know if I can, I don't know if I can go on. This is like, been hit by a truck. Who even am I anymore? I don't even recognize myself. That thing's amazing. I hope we can get closer to it. I can walk right up to the pit box, and then, you know, the pit box is nice and everything, but, oh, that car. I can't get it out of my head. Here's a good view of the front of the grid. Eric Almarola won the pole this morning. I know, kind of shocking. But there you go, all the way down. Yeah, that Ally car is the best in the field. It's not even close. It's gorgeous. I, I, I'm gonna rescind my earlier remark. I don't know if that's my favorite paint scheme ever, but it's close. It beats the Sunny D car. I'll say that confidently. It's better than the Sunny D car. Oh gosh, they started letting some people on pit road, so I just kind of wandered on out here. I gotta get a closer look, just a little bit closer. Dude, this guy's watching me. This official knows I'm, I'm drooling. He can see the drool on my lip, so he doesn't want to let me get too close, I'm sure. Who knows, who knows what I might do. This thing is gorgeous. Gorgeous. Ah, I just, I can't get enough of it. I cannot, I cannot. That is the best paint scheme of 2021, bar none. I don't think anything's gonna top it. I know y'all Gravedigger fans are gonna call me crazy. You're like, it's not even the best in the race. But it is, it is. Gravedigger's cool and all, but as far as a paint scheme, this thing looks gorgeous. I guess I'll film some of the Gravedigger car because y'all want me to, and it looks good. I, this is definitely a, a an amazing scheme and a great crossover, without a doubt, I love it. It's just not the ally scheme, that's all I'm saying. I don't mean to put one down in favor of the other, I just I just love that ally scheme. This thing is this thing is amazing. This is great too. Now to contrast, JTG Doherty, man, they try things with these schemes and it just doesn't ever quite work right. You know what I mean? This is so awesome, walking out with the crowd, starting to file in, there's a band playing out on the front stretch, this is great. I always love the fifth third bank colors, looks good. Clover on Ross Chastain, here's a view towards the front of the grid. The NBC pit box is located here on pit road and who is that I see popping up over the top? Whoa! I'm like 98% sure that's Dale Earnhardt Jr. right there. It sure is Dale Earnhardt Jr. There he is, doing his thing. A popular car this weekend. They brought the show car out to the actual Tootsie's Bar out on the Nashville Boulevard. The PetSmart car up there. So many kind of new and alternate schemes this weekend and a lot of really, I mean, of course you got the classics like the Loves car, always looking great. But it really does look like a lot of teams brought really neat new looks to this track. And I love that. I love when teams sort of theme some of their sponsorship, especially in the case of Suarez, to whatever racetrack we're racing at that weekend. I like seeing new looks every time and again. You know, I like the Kurt Busch Monster Energy look a lot. But I also like it when some teams mix things up, especially if it looks as good as that Ally car, as good as the PetSmart car, the Tootsies car, the Gravedigger car, you know what I mean. But these all look fantastic. Pretty much every car, I think every car is on the grid. Truex, what the heck? He's back here in like 35th, I think, 34th. What are y'all doing? Y'all used to be so good at concrete tracks like Dover. What y'all y'all missed it this year? I mean, still a good looking car. I'm actually wearing my Bass Pro Shops hat that I got at the uh, Bass Pro Shops Pyramid. <laughs> so uh, I guess, shoot, I guess that kind of makes me a Truex fan this week. I just like the fish. I just like the fish logo and it's comfortable. And it, uh, it matches my, my shoes. Yeah, you know, the gray matches the shoes. That's all I'm trying to do, I'm just trying to Coordinate colors here, nothing more, nothing more. All right, well it's pretty toasty down here on Pit Road, the sun is out. A lot of clouds in the sky as you can tell, but not a lot of shade to show for it. Let's head back into the infield now and uh, get some water, catch our breaths a little bit. It's been go, go, go all morning long. And let's fast forward just a little bit in the day. All right, fast forward about an hour or so now, drivers and teams are heading out to the grid for opening ceremonies. I got Darian. Darian with me, Jarrett with me as well for the iceberg. Out onto the pit lane now in front of uh, Bubba Wallace's car. 
I see they got the camera crews and stuff. I wonder if any of these people are with uh, Netflix. Remember, Netflix is supposedly doing a documentary. I see a pretty nice camera rig right here, except that's NASCAR production. So I don't know if that has anything to do with Netflix. I love the bright DoorDash colors. Looking good. Rutledge Wood, Justin Marks, and Daniel Suarez there in the middle. Oh, he's got boots on his fire suit. That's cool. Very Tennessee. So what do you think about NASCAR being back in uh, Nashville, Corey? I love it. Honestly, man, my level of expectation for the racing was like here, but the last yeah. truck race, yeah, Xfinity race. Yeah, they've been fun. Yeah, they've been side by yeah. side. So yeah. I think the cup race is going to get even wider. We're going to see two or three mm -hmm. lanes of racing. So hopefully we're up in the mix. Yeah. Hopefully it's fun to watch. Well, we'll be watching yeah. out for you, man. Good luck. Hey, thanks. We got Music Sensation Pitbull, co-owner of Trackhouse is right there as well, talking with his driver. That's just kind of weird to say, Pitbull's driver. That's crazy. What do you think Bubba's looking at? He's just looking into the sky. Oh, oh, I see, it's for the shot. It's just to get a good shot. I see it. He's just posing. Brian Priest, winner of the Truck Series race, next to Ross Chastain. Both guys talking to their crews. On the other side of Pit Road now, this may be nothing, but why is Cody Ware's pit box perpendicular to the others? I mean, this is a neat setup, but like, you see how all the other boxes are lined up long ways, like parallel to the to pit lane? What's up with Cody Ware's? Well, apologies, that's not Cody Ware this week. That's JJ Yaley in that car. Always easy to spot Samantha Bush in a crowd heading over to the 18. All up and down pit road, fans, sponsors, VIPs, team owners, camera crews, and more are filing around. You can see the grandstands beginning to fill in. It does sound like traffic is is rough out there, so hopefully we don't see like a Kentucky issue. I've already seen a few in the industry tweeting about the lengthy, lengthy traffic delays, so that's not good. That's certainly not great. Hopefully the racing is good enough to overshadow some of the logistical concerns. Ooh, it sounds like driver intros are beginning. They don't have them come out on stage or anything anymore right now. They just stand by their cars and, you know, wave at the crowd. Uh-oh, I see Joey Logano going to make a last minute uh, bathroom break probably. Kyle Larson and Marty Snyder chatting before uh, they go on air. You can tell it's a NASCAR conversation with how he's moving his hands. Oh shoot, they got the governor of Tennessee over on that stage out in the distance addressing the crowd. Hey, he was able to beat the traffic, I guess. He, pr he probably took a helicopter in or something exciting. Oh, and up here at the front of the grid is where Kyle Petty, Dale Jarrett, actually he's talking to Andy Petrie right there from RCR, also has a lot of TV experience. This is where they're set up here at the very front next to Almirola, the pole sitter, to do parts of the pre-race show. NBC's first broadcast weekend of the season. Rick Hendrick has now joined the conversation, talking to Larson. There's William Byron, talking with fans or family or whomever. There's Chase Elliott right there. Probably a porta potty run for Alex Bowman. I love your paint scheme, Alex. Crowd's going wild for Chase. Wow, that's probably the loudest cheer so far. Pretty decent response for Larson, not as big as for Elliott. Yeah, loudest boos for Kyle, loudest cheers for Chase, no surprise. Good stuff, good stuff, national anthem next. Whoa, I missed it, this dude just came flying in. And I also missed Kyle Larson walking right by me. He's so short, I looked right over him. Oh shoot, there's more people flying in. They're parachuting in from everywhere. Line up that entry. They may come faster than you think. I've never been skydiving, and I don't think I ever want to. Ooh, a running landing, nicely done. Oh, but there we go. Just in time for the national anthem, baby. Yeah! Oh my gosh, it's so cool! Oh, that's patriotic right there. That's gorgeous. special to see that. Engines are about to be fired, time to get off pit road. Seek cover, seek shelter. We'll hide out behind Truex's pit box. That was awesome. Never get tired of that, it's been far too long. Hendrick making his way off pit road. Ah yes, my phone signal is terrible. That's how you know fans are back at the racetrack. Oh wow, Tony Stewart is here, fresh off his win 
at Knoxville in his own SRX series last night. Tony Smoke. Touching one more time on that traffic deal, I just saw a tweet, NASCAR actually delayed this race by 10 minutes to allow more fans to get to their seats. I mean, from where I've been sitting on pit road, you guys have seen it in these shots. The stands look, you know, 80 to 90% full, but still. Mm. They're stopped. Quinn. Quinn, what are you doing? Not even a full lap yet. Ah! Actually, it's not a terrible thing because I forgot my earplugs. I forgot how loud these cars are. I know, an embarrassing mistake. Hey, last time I was at a race, it was Coda, and I sat in a heavy braking zone. It wasn't nearly as loud as they are here at Ovals. I went ahead and walked back around to the main entrance because I want to show you guys the view from the grandstands. It sounds like they're under caution here in stage one. Don't know what happened, but hopefully we'll find out soon. Clear backpack. Most tracks I've been to so far are requiring clear backpacks to go into the grandstands. It's a COVID thing, although I don't know how much longer that protocol is going to last. They want it to be clear so they don't have to dig around, touch all your stuff. But I feel like those rules should go away, I don't know, fairly soon. You know, they should. That doesn't mean they will. But they should, probably. And we are in. Going in above the uh, Caterpillar and DoorDash signs. I think we're sitting up uh, pretty high in the sky. I do want to get a view of the concession lines because that's been a hot topic of debate. How's it going? Oh boy, they're long. Concessions right here and the line just keeps going. Wow. Wow, now there's a bar back there, so some of the crowd is for that bar, but that's several lines of quite significant length. And so, you know, I think that's a huge perk that NASCAR usually does allow you to bring coolers, bring your own drinks and stuff in. But at the same time, if you're not gonna allow people to bring their own stuff in, you gotta have enough concession stands, you know, gotta have enough supply to let people buy stuff. It's too hot in the summer to like be waiting for an hour to get a bottle of water. You know, I was at Bristol last summer for the All-Star Race and they ran out of bottled water before the All-Star Race even started. That can't happen in the summer, that cannot happen. All right, they're about to restart Let's see if I can make it up to my seats. They do have an elevator, but I don't know. I've walked so far today, I might as well walk up some stairs. You know, get my steps in, get my cardio, my exercise. Kill two birds with one stone. <gasps> so many stairs. Up, 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 and away. Look down below. Look at all those lines for concessions. Ah. Man. The fan zone, you can see, is pretty empty now which makes sense since we're midway through stage one and the race has begun. Here's a view of all the cars, all the parking. Wow, a lot of people here. I guess, you know, that's a good problem to have, I guess. But hopefully this track and other tracks are able to manage these crowds better and better as we get more and more into the summer. That's all I ask. And you know, that's what pretty much everyone else asks for as well. So, gotta, gotta keep the supply up as best you can to meet the demand. Ooh, the restart has already started. Let's get a view. Oh. 
Kyle Larson gets the win. I think he led every lap. Like every green flag lap at least. He led a lot of this race. It was never really close. The battles from second on back were pretty exciting. Love all the drivers in the top 10. The both Ganassi cars, Stenhouse, uh, Trackhouse, and Suarez got up in the top 10. Good day for some of the SHR guys. So uh, a very uh, a lot of parody in the top 10, but Kyle Larson, man, dude is on another level. I mean, I, all of Hendrick is fast, but Kyle Larson and Cliff Daniels, they're almost perfect right now. Almost, I mean, I, uh, pretty much perfect. I mean, in the last month they're basically perfect. But now we're gonna try to survive the traffic jam and get back to Danny B's house to sleep tonight. Thanks for watching, y'all. Byron about as close as anybody after just a lap.